This fan base is amazing. The city of Cincinnati is amazing, and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Desmond takes a handoff run to the right. He's got all sorts of room to the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Howdy folks, welcome back to Viva La Cats. I am your host, Justin Hiles, accompanied by my great friend, Steve Maurer, and we are here to cover everything Bearcats every single week and re- review games live on X spaces, Twitter spaces, uh, after games. So make sure to check us out for that on the weekends. We have a game coming up this week. It is against EKU. I'm fumbling my words to start us off here. Uh, Eastern Kentucky, it's going to be the first game in the Satterfield era. Uh, Steve So belovedly has donned the Satterfield attire in spirit of uh, day one of Scott. Satterfield. We're going to go out there. We're going to give him a ball game. We're going to go out and play hard and play for this university, play for this program and play for these fans instead of a sold out. I'm not really good at my (laughs) Scott Satterfield impression just yet, but I am wearing the visor for those of you on audio and the coaches polo. So I'm ready to go. It's game week. We're finally here. Justin, let's fucking go. Let's go, baby. It's it's about time that we finally got here. We've been waiting for this for so long. It, it feels incredibly overdue. Ever since we were back in, what, uh, January, February, March, we're like talking coach turnover. We're talking roster turnover. We're talking all these things. And then basketball season's coming to an end. And then it just felt really dry. And now we're here. We're finally here. And so we get to talk about everything that is happening live in front of us and not what we expect every single time. So this will be good. Um, So with the kickoff of the first game of the season with EKU, I would also like to mention that a lot of other games are kicking off. And for those of you who are interested, make sure you check out our Viva La Cats Big 12 Pick'em Pool. It is a weekly occurrence, and we are really hoping that you guys can join. I think it'll be a lot of fun. So far, I think we've got about 20 people in there. Um, We're trying to get some more, but basically it's just going to be a nice environment where people can pick games each week. It's going to be a thing that we update you with on, on our live episodes here. And basically it'll shake out. We'll give shout outs to the weekly winners. And at the end of the season, we'll have prizes for three winners uh, for the top three at the end of the season. Whoever picks the most big 12 games, right? every single week throughout the season. So that's how that's going to work. Make sure to join it through run your pool. Uh, You can go to our page and find uh, that link there. So be on the lookout for that. Other than that, let's go ahead and get started. Steve, what are you looking forward to this Saturday? I mean, what do you, what do you need out of the Bearcats to feel confident? I just need to hear the pads pop one time, baby, and then I'll be ready to go. <laughs> 13 and 0. We're rolling all the way. No. Um <laughs> sorry, I'm being jokey today. I, I think I need to see the offense. Um, I really feel good about the defense. Uh two deep two deep was released this week. We're gonna talk about that later in the show, but it does feel really good to have that defense feeling pretty secure, Justin. I feel good mm-hmm. about the names that are there, feel good about some of the guys that are returning. I just really need to see this offense work. I need to see them put up some points against, oh, admittedly, a good Eastern Kentucky program, a good FCS program that made the FCS playoffs last year. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you're Cincinnati. You're a Power 5 team now. You should win. If if not win handily, you should win and look good doing it. So I just want to see what the offense looks like. I did get a chance to listen to the press conferences and the radio shows today. I have some nice. quotes pulled up that I want to talk about later. But, Justin, I think it's the offense. Just got to see what that line looks like, what the running game looks like, and most importantly, what Emory Jones looks like in the backfield. That I would have to agree with for the most part. I would say for a spin zone, I'm actually really interested to see how the defense holds up because it feels like such an expected kind of thing. And I want to see how up to speed they actually are because I think the offense, we're all just kind of like, 
you know, who knows hands in the air. We have no clue. We're hoping that it gels, but defensively we have a lot of confidence and I want to make sure that our confidence is well-founded. Essentially. I want to make sure that our defense, you know, whatever question marks we might have, we can figure those out and then find out exactly how we can translate that to a game against Pitt on the road. Following that up, you go from arguably one of your, arguably your easiest game of the year to one of your hardest games of the year back to back. And so when you have those kind of layered on top of each other, um, I I think your defense is not going to have so many question marks, but you want to make sure that that's really solid going forward. So, um, you know, seeing how those newer guys in those lines can hold up, um, especially, you know, I think we had a lot of question marks at the safety and like corners position. I think that's going to be interesting. Um, You know, again, it's an, FCS team. So you would hope that they can keep pace, but um, you know, if, if they're struggling there, it's going to be a long season. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Um, yeah. So. And I, I've talked about the depth, you know, I, I do think the depth might be an issue this year um, for the defense, just because we just don't have that full two deep. We do have a very good one deep. We just don't have the full set of names. And there are still some good names in that two deep and some young guys are going to get some playing time as well. There's only room for improvement on both sides of the ball, but I, I think that's fair, but I think you're just trying to be a contrarian, Justin. And I, Justin, I, I, I don't need contrarians this week. I need full <laughs> steam ahead. I need all energy focused one direction, <laughs> pull the rope the same way. Uh, Butch Jones is there. Oh yeah. Um, but, but yeah, Justin, I, I think that's fair. I think just the cornerbacks as well is going to be an, an, like a, a thing we want to see because mm-hmm. if they uh, don't look too hot against, you know, Eastern Kentucky, then it may be a long season, especially yeah. in the offensive minded big 12 that plays good defense, by the way, plays good defense. We're not in 2012 anymore. We're playing. defense. Right. <laughs> um, but I do think that with that, that is something to watch. I agree. Also yeah. shout out to Mason Fletcher. Let's just hope the punt game stays as strong yeah. as it <laughs> I mean, it's it's been solid for years, and it's I think it's honestly been under a couple hats there. So I'm not really concerned about that as much. Um, what I will actually be very interested to see, and probably like the thing that interests me the most, again, the wide receivers are a huge question mark because it's, I mean, other than Chris Scott, every single guy on this roster at the wide receiver position is new, which we're going to include Evan Prater in that because this is his first season playing wide receiver. So with all that said, that's a huge question mark. I really want to know about the running backs because we have a stable of very familiar names. We've got Corey Kiner. We've got both the Montgomery's like, this is going to be very interesting to see how this whole thing shakes out because last year, you know, this is a Luke fickle, uh, Gino kind of scheme there where we're throwing like all four guys in every single game and we're just like mixing it up. And I'm really curious to see. And the running back coach is telling them to not make <laughs> cuts and just run straight through the hole. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that too. Uh, <laughs> that's a, that's a whole different conversation. That was so stupid. I'm sorry. I just yeah. want to say that. I mean, you're right. It, it was, I mean, it, you have, if you're going to run the ball, do the thing that makes running the ball advantageous and try to get some extra yards. Don't just punch it up the center and hope it works every time. Cause it clearly did not regardless. We have a lot of guys that are very familiar to us in that spot. And I'm really curious to see how those guys shake out. Um, and I, I would imagine that instead of Corey Kiner being listed as the starter or Charles McClellan being listed as a starter last year, then ends up being some other guy is playing 90% of your minutes through that game. I think I'm hoping that that'll be the case. Corey Kiner's the starter. Corey Kiner is going to take those minutes. He might get the first second down, but you're going to bring in somebody else for third or fourth, but let, uh, let the bell cow be the bell cow. Don't steal it from somebody else. Like let your starter be your starter. Um, I think that's a huge thing for us going forward this year. And speaking of starters being starters, quality players leading the team, we do have our captains named. Um, and so there's four of them. And that is Emery Jones, Gavin Gerhardt, Dante Corleone and Juwan Briggs. Any surprises there? Um, no, not really. I mean, I guess Gerhardt maybe just because we don't hear as much from the offensive line. I feel like we kind of knew the other three just because of how they were featured at media days, how they're featured mm-hmm. in most of the press conferences. Obviously, Dante with all of his Sensi Reigns uh, connections. Uh, 
I guess I haven't really heard as much from Gavin Gerhardt, but maybe we can get him out there. Zach Stipe, shout out to you. Get Gavin Gerhardt on a on a press conference. I want to hear from that guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no surprises for me, Justin. It was very cool, though, to see Emery get named. Um, I, like I said, I listened to the coach's show. He was featured on the coach's show tonight. Uh, he's a really interesting young guy, and I do want I want the best for him. I want him to succeed here. And it was interesting, too, that he was named starter last year at Arizona State as well. And just without the amount of dysfunction that was going on there compared yeah. to the relative ease of the season here, I do think it can be better for him. And it speaks to his character that he was named the captain. I was going to say the exact, you took the words right out of my mouth. I mean, being able to go in a program, like you said, like with ASU and then come right here, uh, granted, you know, you've got the experience, you're a veteran player, uh, but you're brand new to the team and you have some other familiar names around course offensively yeah there's <laughs> there's a lot to go around but regardless the point remains that it is great to see that you know emory is a captain people are going to be rallying behind him that does make a very um you know poignant statement that he this is the guy too uh you don't name a captain for a guy who's not the guy um and so i think that that's really an important piece too um even though he is already the starter um, of course, with Dante and Juwan, I think that's just like, <laughs> man, I'm telling you, the mafia is going to be so much fun this year. And it, it's it only fitting instead of the captains, maybe we should call them the godfathers or I don't know, the something, the brotherhood. I thought we were doing the mafia. Yeah. Well, the, it, the, the no, mob. no, I'm talking about all four of them. <laughs> oh, all four of them. Okay. But well, yeah. you know, you, you got uh, Joan B, Dante <laughs> Corleone, the godfather, uh, Danny G. Uh, yeah. So I, I do think that, you know, Eric Phillips there as well. Shout out Eric. Um, Justin, it, it is kind of interesting though, that uh, if we can get into, go ahead and do the two deep real quick. Yeah, for um, sure. We texted about this, but I do have to agree with you. It is kind of interesting to see um, Malik Van as a second string guy. Um, and, you know, I I think it's good for our depth because if you look at some of the other positions, um, I do like Jack Dangle, obviously, at linebacker. Dorian Jones transfer. He's going to – he should have a lot of tackles for us this year. We've got a transfer, Jordan Young, from Arizona State at the cornerback position. Uh, and got a couple other guys that have been in the program for a little bit at other spots. Um, but it is just kind of interesting though, Justin, um, just to have that much depth up front, because just to me, I feel like those guys are unfortunately most prone to injury just because of how physical they have to be the stunts right. and moves that they're, they're having to do every down, just trying to get past, past these alignment, trying to get to the quarterback or trying to stop the run. So it is nice though, to have that depth up mm -hmm. front. Yeah. And I mean, I think it makes sense too. you know, it's like, like you just mentioned when you have a guy like Malik van, who's ready to jump in right then and there on the next down at any given moment, like that is super, super powerful because there's a lot of positions elsewhere on the team where there are plenty of question marks about that too deep kind of position. Um, and, and so to have some confidence there, I think is really reassuring, but again, it's, you know, here and there. There's only a few of those situations throughout the entire roster. Um, <clears throat> you did mention uh, earlier about the press conference and um, some of your reactions that you had to that. So uh, why don't you give us that quote from Coach Thomas? Yeah, so Coach Pete Thomas, quarterback's coach here at Cincinnati now with uh, Scott, Scott Satterfield. He was on the radio show as well. But he had a pretty interesting quote today at his press conference. Um, so, well, actually, no, this was from Emory Jones, but it was Emory agreeing with quarterbacks coach Pete Thomas from at K Nickerson 42, Keegan Nickerson. They agree that this is the best receiver room they've both been a part of, which is pretty interesting, Justin, because obviously the amount of guys we lost from yeah. <laughs> the receiver room last year, especially two guys that are in the NFL now, it right. is pretty crazy to think about that we have – a, a good receiver room again and we'll obviously see what it looks like but man i i think that is positive to hear yeah that. um and for for that that running back room as well emory said tonight on the coaches show that he feels that they have three starting caliber running backs and that's not even included ethan right like he <laughs> no. we've seen him have some hard runs our guy coomer loves ethan right and dude that I'm guy's just, a boss 
Yeah. Like, for real. It's insane. Like I really believe like he's, this is such a good point because when we talk about the depth of that running back position, I really full heartedly believe all of these guys could be a starter when we were in the American. And I think arguably most of them could be a starter for us now too. <laughs> like yeah. it's, it's insane how talented that room is. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just, for the fact that too, that Emery does not have to do all of the running and passing. He's not going to be a one man show. There is some legit talent back there. And I do think, you know, Ryan Montgomery has had some good yards yards here. Miles Montgomery. We haven't been able to see as much of him of, from him, but he's been a pretty good prospect. Like I said, Ethan, Wright, And then I feel like everybody's sleeping on Corey Kiner, man. I, I want to see Corey Kiner really just yep. come out and like run the ball angrily this year. And not run in, uh, be able to yeah. make some moves in the backfield and not just fall. Oh, God, I'm, I'm still on that. Uh, yeah. I won't name the coach. But anyway, yeah, I'm just, I feel like nobody's talking about Corey Kiner. And I think that's pretty special when you've got two running backs and you've got, we mentioned Ethan Wright and nobody's kind of keeping, they're kind of keeping Corey Kiner under the radar. I like, I just need to see that offensive line gel, Justin, because I do yep. think there is some talent on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's a very good point, too, because a lot of these guys that are transfers, you know, at the running back position, you don't have any transfers. All these guys are very familiar to you, but for all the wide receivers, for, you know, even the tight ends, okay, you've got some guys coming up, but guys that haven't played. And so, you know, there's a lot of those kind of who fits where, who's going to actually be able to break out. And I think that's kind of the best part for us is it can be anybody's moment. And it can be anybody's turn because there are so many, you know, options as early as we are in the season that you don't have like that clear in a way, like this is your number one guy. This is the guy that they're going to throw to the ball to every single down. And, you know, every team's going to figure that out really fast. I think there's a lot of chances here for us to kind of sneak up on some teams. Unfortunately, I think it just happens to be that some of those teams are going to be some of the non-conference games that, realistically we we're hoping that we you know shouldn't have too much of an issue winning albeit you know pits in there um so that's a good point too on <clears throat> you know kind of the ones and the twos of everything i really want to get your uh, opinion on this since we're still on the eku mix as far as this weekend goes the bearcats again first game under scat satterfield um it, it's going to be interesting to figure out how dominant we can be against a team that traditionally we have been and a type of team that we have been dominant against. Where do you see the final score shaking out for the Bearcats this week? So uh, Satterfield has beat EKU twice in his career, a 45, nothing and a 30 to three. I'm going to say it's in the middle of that. I'm going to say it's like a 38 to 10 kind of game. I don't really want to, put too much on the offense and say that they're just going to put up 60 and really <laughs> look good. But, you know, it, again, like I said, it's a FCS team. I really have a lot of respect for what um, Eastern Kentucky has done, man. Their coach had a heart attack last year and he's back on the field this year. Like that, that's impressive. They beat Bowling Green at Bowling Green last year. Um, they like, man, they're, they're a good FCS program. And I have all the respect in the world to them. I just think FC like, why am I saying FC Cincinnati? <laughs> I think the Bearcats should win pretty comfortably in this game. Yeah. Uh, and the crowd would be with you here. Um, I put up a poll just a little bit ago. It's asking, how do you expect the game against EKU to finish? And uh, the options were Bearcats W's by either 21 points, 21 plus, uh, 7 to 20, or basically a touchdown or less, or nightmare scenario. Uh, thankfully, nobody voted for that. There wasn't even any hate votes from uh, I know the UCF fans that follow us and vote on our polls for all the wrong, wrong shit to happen. I know that you're out there and I know that you're doing it regardless. Uh, the crowd would agree with you there uh, in a 77 to 20 point range um, uh, being the dominant answer there. Um, I would say too, like, I mean, I, I think, I think you make a good point personally. I would say, I think this game is going to be, I don't think it's going to be, you know, sitting back in cruise control by any means, but I definitely think the Bearcats should be able to take care of business. And so for that, I'd say it's probably going to be, I'd say like a 35, 35 to like 10 or 35 to 14 kind of game. 
Um, I'll put my I'll put my uh, chip down on thirty five to ten. That's where I would go with that. Bold, <laughs> very bold. Um, Only split me by a field goal there. Yeah. <laughs> For uh, some of the other polls, I want to get these out really quick uh, before we move on to the other things. Um, so again, while we're still on EKU. Um, I also asked what group will have the best outing against EKU. So the option were was uh, QB in the wide receiver room, running backs, defensive tackles and linebackers, or special teams. Um, and we have a consensus tie right now between the running backs and uh, the defensive line. So I think that's about fair. I would say that I personally, I think the running backs are going to be the star of the show this week. Um you know, I think it's just a little bit more of a known commodity for the Bearcats right now. Um, and you would expect, you know, under Satterfield, it's probably only going to get better, too, which is also kind of insane to think about, uh, at least in non-conference. We'll, we'll get to the Big 12 stuff later, uh, and we could be concerned later for that. Um, as far as which player will impress you the most against EKU, uh, we did not have any answers for the other option, but... The options were Emory Jones, Dante Corleone, and Corey Kiner, and 46% of you voted Corey Kiner. Uh, so that would take the lead. And again, it seems like everybody's high on the running backs right now, and uh, I think it makes sense. Like we said, there's a lot of talent back there. Hey, folks, we're going to take a quick second to read this message from our sponsor, and this week's is Charlie Hustle Clothing Co., Charlie Hustle is a vintage-inspired clothing company based out of Kansas City, which is the heart of the Big 12 in Big 12 country that specializes in collegiate and hometown apparel. Charlie Hustle wants you to be the best-dressed fan this season, so be sure to check out their wide selection of officially licensed collegiate apparel today and show off your school spirit all season long. With over 30 schools to choose from, they've got you covered with all of your collegiate apparel needs, so shop today at www.charliehustle.com. That's Charlie Hustle, vintage made fresh. And make sure to use the promo code 101215. That is T-E-N-1215 for 15% off of all non-sale items. And eventually, hopefully soon, we'll get Cincinnati in there too. You got a Bearcat sports wrap up? I have a Bearcat sports wrap up, Justin. Let's go. Let's go. So first full weekend of Bearcat sports back on campus in Clifton. Shout out to all the people who are at the volleyball matches this weekend in the play for 10, invita- tribute to 10, number 10, in- in- invitational event. Bearcats went two and one hosting that event. Unfortunately, losing to Crosstown rivals Norwood Tech on Saturday, defeating Alabama State and Indiana State in sweeps on in the other matches. Two and one to start the year. Pretty good start. They will go to Coke. Uh, Cookville, Tennessee, not Cokeville, Cookville, <laughs> to play against Tennessee Tech, Eastern Tennessee State, and Kennesaw State in the Golden Eagle Tournament. So good luck to the ladies there. Hopefully they can pull out three more victories this weekend. On to the soccer team. Soccer has won their first game of the season. They did defeat Bowling Green this Thursday, one to nothing at their home opener in front of a great crowd at Gettler Stadium. Uh, With some sweet so many, unis. Sweet, sweet unis, unis too, by the way. Very clean unis. <laughs> if nothing else, they're going to have some of the best unis in the Big 12 this year. So they, they were supposed to play against Illinois State on Sunday, but that match was canceled due to Illinois State not having enough players. So uh, loss of a game there for the Bearcats. We'll see if they can try to reschedule that. They do play twice this weekend. They will play Thursday night against Central Michigan back at Gettler Stadium. And then they will visit Ann Arbor and play the Michigan Wolverines this Sunday. Uh, you can watch all of those games, you, the home games, ESPN plus uh, the road games. I don't know why you'd have big 10 plus if you're a Bearcat fan, but if you got a login, go find it, I guess. Is big 10 plus a thing. Um, I, it says on the schedule, big 10 plus I'm big sure it's the plus. streaming arm of Fox sports or whatever. Very so. creative. Thank you. Very yes. creative. Yes. Everything's a plus now. Yes. Uh, there's a Baylor plus now if you're interested in Baylor sports. Of course there is. <laughs> <laughs> Men's golf is going to start their year after coming off their first NCAA tournament appearance in a while. Shout out to those guys again for doing that. They will be playing in the Marquette Intercollegiate this weekend, uh, finishing up on Tuesday. So good luck to the golf guys this weekend. Let's hope for another great year, another run back to the NCAA tournament. 
And we are going to finish up with cross country. They, both the men's and women's teams are heading up to Oxford, Ohio to race at Miami in the Red Hawk Rumble. So if nothing, bring home the bell for us cross country. I want to hear some ring-a-ding-dings back in Clifton once again. Take care of business. That's right. That's right. It doesn't matter what sport we're playing. Just take care of business. It's my end. Take care <laughs> of business, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so again, I will just say, go out and support these teams. They deserve your support just as much as the football and basketball players do. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Volleyball games, man, I'll tell you what, they are so much fun to go watch. And just the athletes that are on the court and the amount of action that goes on. I really want to champion volleyball on our show, man. I do think it's like one of the most fun sports that does not get enough love. And oh, yeah. obviously we have Jordan Thompson. We had that great run when she was here, but man, they need your sport. Then we should go watch and support. Like I, I had a lot of fun earlier this year, watching the lacrosse games. Why don't we get some more people to be watching volleyball games in person and mm-hmm. on the internet? Uh, they're a lot of fun. So we're going to try and cover, uh, the Olympic sports more and the other, not the other sports, but we're going to try and cover all Bearcat sports this year (laughs) on the Twitter account. So if you're not following us already, go follow us at Viva the cats pod. Thank you, Steve. Yes. And that's a very good point too. Uh, If, if you are, if you're, if you're like, if you're like us and trying to pick up on some of the other sports and trying to be a little bit more active as a Bearcat fan uh, and, and you like action, because every sport is a little different. But if you like constant action, volleyball is a very good one to start with, seriously. Because, you know, even everybody knows, even like baseball or softball, things like that can kind of get slow. Soccer, you're kind of waiting for score. Like volleyball is constant scoring, constant movement, constant go, 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 go. So it's a very fun one to watch. Would highly recommend that. Um, yeah, I mean, as for basically the plan for the rest of the season for those of you uh, who are tuning in weekly like we said for our schedule basically what our goal is is to release our episodes on our Wednesdays uh, Wednesday mornings and then release our um, Twitter space episode on Sunday after those games uh, after the football games so we're going to try to keep a pretty consistent schedule with that um, as best as we can. Of course, we all have lives. We're all busy, but we're going to try to keep a consistent schedule there. Yeah. <laughs> well, Steve might. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I do. No, we all we have lives. We have lives. We have, we're, we're busy with work. But regardless, uh, that covers just about everything that we've got for you this week. Um, not a whole lot left, but we are T minus four days. We're edging on three days here. It's almost Saturday. It's almost Saturday. <laughs> it's almost time for the first Saturday in Cincinnati. And I'm Saturday. ready to Kentucky fry some kernels, man. Let's go. <laughs> I think Let we us... need to make yeah. that, that, that graphic, Justin. Like, you know, I've got some it. trouble on my Reds page for keeping drafts um, when the team has stunk. I uh, credited myself with a curse earlier this year. So, Let's not keep any drafts, but maybe just keep it in the photo reel just in case, you know? Yeah. 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 So, we can Kentucky fry some kernels. I, I, I like that. I like, I like that. that. So we'll see. And okay. Also, but if you're doing that, does that mean that you're Kentucky frying the kernel, like Colonel Sanders? Or is it like popcorn? Because technically a kernel, different kernel, but. Uh, I don't know. I guess we we can say we're gonna eat the colonel's chicken. Uh, uh like <laughs> take take their. I don't know. That's not really a good one, is it? Um, we, we, we are going to destroy out, your soul. We're gonna pop some kernels. There we go. <laughs> that, that doesn't even make sense. But uh, <laughs> we're I, gonna I don't know. pop some kernels this weekend. Pop some kernels, baby. Pop some co- popcorn kernels. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Bearcats fans and uh, hate listeners alike. I know you're out there. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. We are very excited for this week to get going and figure out exactly what we've got in our uh, roster here. So it'll be a lot of fun. If you're not going to the game, make sure to be watching. It's going to be fun. And uh, stay tuned for that post-game live spaces. We will be there, and we're hoping you will be too. So if you're not already, follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on TikTok. Follow us on... I think that covers pretty much everything. But follow us everywhere and share us with your friends. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Go Bearcats.
and Viva. Buckets. Buckets. We're bringing it back. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go.